right about an hour now. So we're gonna tighten this up. Um, and we're gonna just stop um, right there. Um, that the New Testament directs the tithes to be paid to the state, which replaced Israel theocracy. Paul's vocabulary and teaching suggested that giving is voluntary and that there's no set percentage. But I, I challenge that only because of you have you you don't you don't you don't have a commandment because there was already a commandment um and that the voluntariness of it was supposed to elicit a more heartfelt action instead of one given out of ceremoniously um that we do it with joy. Um, following the example of Christ who gave even his life, 2 Corinthians 8, chapter 8, verse 9, we should cheerfully give as much as we have uh, decided, uh, 2 Corinthians 9 and 7, based on how much the Lord has prospered us, 1 Corinthians 16 and 2 knowing that we reap in proportion to what we sow, 2 uh, Corinthians 9 and 6, and that we will ultimately give account for our deeds, Romans 14 and 12. So what we really need to focus on is one, doing it the way God said do it. And two, true to, true to the understanding though veiled um, that there was no percentage set given um, that's because we already knew and so but understand just like in the times when the Pharisees gave yeah you know when you there's a principle that automatically engages itself. Mm -hmm. There's a principle that automatically occurs. But the condition of our heart is really what God is looking for. And if we can deal with the condition of our heart, then our faith will always be whole. So when we give, we don't give begrudgingly thinking, I could do this, I could have done this with the money, I could have done that with the money, I could have, could have, could have, could have, could have, could have, could have. Let me tell you something. You can't afford not to give what God is requiring, what God is asking for. Because this, like right, right now, I support this ministry. We, I don't have enough people to support this ministry. I support this ministry with my finances right now. But I already have seen the hand of God knowing that that's only because of this pandemic thing that we're in. I know this isn't going to be the final, what you call it. I already know that. I've seen visions of what God's going to do. The building, I've even, this, I've already, this, I've already designed the sanctuary in the church. I've already drawn up loose, loose plans of it. I already know what God is taking us. So, and it's going to outlive me. This ministry will be here long after I'm gone. I know that because God told me that. Um, so when you give, when you under, you give and you give with the understanding that I'm going to be blessed if I'm a blessing. You can't be blessed if you're not a blessing. Another analogy that was given was told to me was as long as you got your hand closed, the money doesn't leave and nothing can come in either. Mm. You have to open your hand. You have to give in order to receive. You have to open your hand. You have to, in order to receive, you got to give. Mm -hmm. And if God has blessed you, then I like when I get ready to go visit other churches, um, 
part of my getting ready, when I even when I wasn't a pastor, was in my heart, I said, Lord, how much do I give? And and I have to say, and this is just my personal opinion, and it's one that I I I learned from my mentors, uh, specifically district, the late District Elder Walls. Um, he he never did a hundred dollar line, a fifty dollar line. Just bring bring what you are willing to give. Let me tell you something. God only counts what you're willing to give. He only counts that. And so when people get up in this, start these lines, the $100 line, the $50 line, the $20 line, that's almost to me like what the scribe, what the Pharisees was doing when they was given out of their abundance. You get in this line and everybody's looking at you. It's a sense of self-righteousness and pride. And oftentimes those they're setting people up because the people standing in line are telling the people who are not standing in line, I got it better than you. I mean, that's not what they're saying, but those thoughts are flying through the, and it sets a real, it quenches the spirit. My pastor, my former pastors never did that. My uh, other pastor, uh, mentor, uh, District Elder Hines, he was very clear on it. Give what God told you to give and don't give one dime more. Because if what, if it, you see, it's, it goes to this principle of the scripture, <clears throat> condition of your heart. If you know God is calling for a tenth and you only willing to give him a fifth, then that's what you're willing to give. It ain't what God asked for, but the condition of your heart, the, and the condition of your heart, you're willing to give. Well, God going to bless you. But just the principle is also set too. The, the, when, you, when you meet the criteria, you receive the blessing. Amen. So if you give what I'm only able, I'm only willing to give this. Hey, I'm grateful. You know, the only person you're hurting is yourself. You're not hurting the church. I don't personally believe that. I've not read that anywhere. I personally believe that if God placed a ministry and called a ministry, that he's going to provide for the ministry. It just won't be you. Yeah. And so the church is going to be blessed. The church is going to receive the increase because somebody's going to pick up the slack that you dropped off on because God's going to impart on them the principle of giving Given what God required and given it from their heart, God gonna bless them. You won't get the blessing. So you you're not hurting God. God, you're not stopping God's show. You're not holding God back. God just gonna find somebody else willing to do it, and He gonna bless them accordingly. Amen. So the only one we hurt when we don't give is us, yeah. because God gonna find somebody else that's willing to do it. And he's going to bless them accordingly. And then we get jealous when we see God blessing folk, but you don't know what they gave to get that blessing. And not as if they gave to get that blessing. Because remember, we talked about sometimes the blessing is not what you receive, but what you don't have to pay out. I got a ton. <laughs> I got so many stories and testimonies about money we didn't have to pay out. When it was, when when I messed up my taxes, and the IRS was coming after me, they had already took the title to my car, and they were coming after my check, and God gave me wisdom. Next thing you know, the IRS was sending me checks for about six months. Every six weeks, I was getting a check from in the mail from them. They coming after me for over ten grand, and they ended up sending me about nine grand in the mail. Over a course of six to uh, every six weeks for about six months straight, we were getting checks in the mail. Just I ran a check because, you know, I had messed up my taxes and I got it fixed. And once I got it fixed, they stopped chasing me. But the money that they were talking about taking over half my paycheck. 
I could go on and on. I got so many stories, it'll make you stupid. You'd be like, that ain't real. Psh, I got proof. I got stone cold proof. And that's just the stuff that I know of that I've avoided. The stuff that I know of that God has kept me from. There's, there's got to be story after story. We just, well, I talked about it last week. The $2,500 you would have to pay to have the air conditioner replaced. At some point, we might have to have it replaced, but it ain't this year. <laughs> and guess what? When it's time for it to get replaced, God going to provide. Because that's what he always does. And then we can stop becoming so anxious and fearful about what tomorrow holds. I got to admit, the time we in right now, and I'm going to stop once I say this because I just feel led to. The time we in right now, I saw it approaching and I got a little anxious. Mm 